Today, we're going to set up an external drive in Proxmox so that we can back up our VMs and containers to it. And we're going to set this up so that when the power goes off or you unplug and replug it into a different port, it automatically recognizes it. You don't have to do anything weird to reconfigure or map your settings. So let's do this. Uh, yeah, here we are in Proxmox. This is the dashboard. We can see this is our node right here. We can see we've got really one container and a bunch of VMs here running, uh, well, a couple of them running, a couple of them power powered off for now. And we can see our different storage mediums that we have here. Backups is a external USB connected, you know, three and a half inch hard drive. As the name suggests, I'm using for backups. We can see here that we've already got some backups going on, set up and scheduled and running. For the case of this video, we're going to add another USB drive. So how do we get started? Well, first thing we need to do is stop holding it and plug it in already. Eventually. And there we go. Unlike Windows, it doesn't automatically recognize and provision the drive to be used for storage or anything else when you plug a new USB medium into your Proxmox host. So how do we get it set up and provisioned? Well, this is where we're gonna end up doing this in shell over command line. So first place we're gonna wanna go is back to our node, Frosty, and we'll hit shell. We're gonna review a couple of things. First things first is LSBLK. This is gonna show the different drives that are already plugged in and or mapped to the host. So we can see we've got our backups drive here, which is SBD. That's our six terabyte current external backup drive. Uh, well, NVMe1, I've still got to wipe and partition. Maybe we'll do that in another video. If that's something you wanna see, leave a comment and let me know. So it looks like SBC here is our four terabyte drive that we just plugged in and it looks like it has been previously used, most likely for chia farming. So we're gonna need to wipe that bad boy before we do anything. Back in the web GUI, we can see and confirm that SBC drive here is the four terabyte external drive. To wipe this, the easiest way is to make sure you've got the correct disk selected. Up here at the top, go to wipe disk. It'll confirm all the things. Are you sure you want to wipe dev SDC? All the data will be lost. That should be the right drive. If not, oops. And there we go, it's wiping the disk. Now, if we come back over here and type lsblk again, we can find our SBC drive here. It's it's wiped, it's 3.6 terabyte, we're good to go. So starting from scratch, we're going to format the USB drive in ext4 format. So good if I use the right command. So now it's gonna go through and set up that file system. Now we're gonna pull a command in to pull the UUID of that USB device that's unique to that physical device is going to be how we map it so that no matter what happens, when you plug it back into the host, the host recognizes it and remaps it to where it's supposed to be mapped to. So blkid dash zero list. It's gonna give us a list of all the devices we have already in here. Here's our SDC and this is the UUID. So we're just gonna hit copy, just open up a notepad, paste it on there, put it off to the side because you'll need it later. Now, next up, we're gonna make a directory for our backups. I've already got the directory for our backups, so I'm gonna name it a little bit different. Let's see, it's gonna be mkdir for make directory slash, and then name your directory. All of my storage, additional storage, other than the primary drive that the hypervisor lives on is in home. So we're gonna make directory home slash bu. And I'll do that lowercase for backups right? Because I've already got a slash home slash backups. So directories made. You can check and make sure that that was created by doing a CD slash home slash BU and it opens up in the directory. There's nothing in there. In order to mount your USB drive permanently, like after reboots, you have to add a line into your FS tab config file or I like to call it fstab. If you make changes to your physical host, it's gonna look at the device's UUID instead of the block device name in order to know that it's mapped and mounted correctly. 
First thing we wanna do, we're going to edit our f-stab. I know that's gonna piss some people off, so I'm gonna keep saying it. We're gonna edit our f-stab file with um, our favorite editing app, Nano. We can see we've got some additional things that we've added over time, but we're going to add dev disk by dash UUID slash, and then we are going to paste the UUID that we copied before, uh, space, and then the directory we made. So ours was home slash BU, and then ext4 defaults and zero. Uh. Don't forget that your number lock is not on by default, and it's usually easier just to use the numbers at the top of the keyboard. I always forget to do that. Anyway, control X will exit. Yes, you want to save and enter. Just keep the name the same. You want to mount the drive, so mount dash A. Oh, because I fat fingered it. Hold on, let's go back into Nano uh, to edit this. Control X, yes, same name, mount A, and it mounted all the disks. So now we've got to create a directory where our backups can live. Under data center, again, we'll go to storage, hit add directory. The ID is whatever you want to name it. We're going to name this one BU along the same naming scheme there. The directory is slash home slash BU, which is the one we just created. We want to use this for backup files. We can do anything we want in here, really. So for this specific video, we're talking about backups. So that's all we're going to enable in here. But we could set this up for a place where our ISOs live, our container templates live, our, con our containers themselves, all of that stuff and we just hit okay now we can see it's provisioning it's doing its thing there we go we've got a total of uh 3.94 terabytes available this is our backup repository basically so so what else is left to do schedule the backups of course this is surprisingly easy actually so we're gonna go here to data center backups this is simple. All we do is hit add. We can change the storage. This is only going to recognize the directories that you created that are specifically for VM backups or the, the backup disks. So, so when we created this and we have our content um, for the VZ dump backup file, that's what it's going to look for. Any kind of storage that has this content allowed on it. Back to backups. Our BU is our storage. Now we can schedule this. We can have this scheduled every 30 minutes or one once a year, you know, however you want to schedule it out. So currently I've got my other backup schedule running every day at 2 a.m. So in that case, I would go every day, 0, 0200 basically. Include the selected VMs. So you can just do all of them or you can come here and just do all or do exclude selected VMs or pool based if they're, if you had a ZFS pool set up, um, which we don't. So we're gonna do included the VMs. We'll do the Docker server just for this video. We'll send you an email on a failure or send you an email always, whether it succeeds or not. And then put in your email address here. Compression, just leave it alone is ZSTD because it's fast and good. The three different modes that you have really are gonna be based on if you can have downtime. So for example, my flux nodes, I want those up and running as often as possible. For that, I would leave it under snapshot mode. So snapshot mode provides the lowest operation downtime at the cost of a small inconsistency risk. Suspend, provided for compatibility reasons, don't use suspend. There's really not a need for it. Doesn't necessarily improve data consistency and it could result in a longer downtime for your VM. So really your only options should be stop or snapshot. Stop is the method of most consistent backups. So if you've got a VM that's not a flux node, say it's an app server or a file server or something of the likes, this is probably going to be the mode that you want to use. Have you have a set downtime, you know, every other Sunday at 2 a.m. from 2 to 3 a.m., this is your maintenance window. Your VM is not going to be available to anybody that needs it or any services. But this powers down the VM and then runs the backup process to back up the VM data. What we're gonna be doing is the snapshot. You can click repeat missed. Essentially, if the VM is powered off, when it gets turned back on, it's gonna do the backup. We could hit create here, but we're gonna to wanna to go to retention. We will go to daily. We're gonna keep the last 
five daily. So we have a rolling five day retention. So every day at 2 a.m. it takes a snapshot or it takes a backup in the snapshot mode, not a snapshot because a snapshot and a backup are two different things and stores it on our USB drive that we just installed. It's a rolling five days. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now Saturday backups overwrites Monday's backup. So then you have Tuesday through Saturday and so on, so on, so on. So it's a rolling retention. So you've got those retention points if you need them and it's done. We can see it's up here in our scheduler. It's easy as that. If you got to this point in the video and you learned something, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If this is the kind of content that you enjoy, make sure you subscribe. I make videos like this all the time. And of course, thanks for watching.